All right. When rabbis and Christians argue over prophecy, one issue that comes up over several passages is whether the term seed or zera is always meant literally or can it be meant metaphorically. This is common um, among debates in Isaiah 53. Um, and I'll let William of Tanakh talk introduce the issue to you. So hold on. Right, this question is, let me pull it back up on screen here. Yeah. Very good, very good. This is a really cool one. Okay, so um, Rabbi Singer, you explain well that Isaiah 53 is speaking of the righteous remnant of the nation of Israel. You illustrate this by the context and passages within Isaiah 53. More specifically, it states in Isaiah 53.10 that if his soul makes itself restitution, he shall see seed. He shall prolong, prolong his days. That's interesting too, by the way. I didn't catch that earlier. He shall prolong his days, and God's purpose shall prosper in his hand. In other words, we will see seed, uh, which you explain can only mean physical children. Jesus, of course, had no children. Therefore, it must be speaking of Israel. A Christian argued that in Isaiah 57, verse 4, the prophet uses the term seed of falsehood. Here he claimed it is proof that seed can be made of work as well. How do you respond to this, Rabbi? Okay, so that right, is this question. introduction. Uh, this is the passage in, in question. It says in Isaiah 53.10, when his soul makes an offering for guilt, or if his soul makes an offering for guilt, uh, he shall see um, offspring that seed, and he shall prolong his days. Now, this is the ESP translation. It's a little inaccurate, or it makes a, a certain choice. He shall see offspring. It's um, Yari Zerah. Um, not Zaro. So it's not explicit to say that it is his offspring. So the Christian could simply argue that it's like, yeah, he shall see just offspring. It does, it, Jesus doesn't have to have offspring to be the subject of the passage. And, and you can interpret it just fine that way. If you're not comfortable with that, um, you could say, yeah, it's a metaphorical offspring that he has, sort of like converts, our, our offspring of Israel. And, and we'll go through that in a little bit. So this is the issue that's being debated here. Um, I want to give thanks to Answering Judaism, because in 2013, he did a lot of the grunt work for me. Digging out, like, not as a personal favor to me, but, like, digging out all the passages so I don't have to mine through the Hebrew Bible to find them. Not that I don't enjoy reading the Hebrew Bible, but it's always nice when someone does the digging for you. So you can just um, add your own stuff. Like, he's giving a vocabulary argument. I'll repeat his arguments and then add an argument from Hebrew grammar just to reinforce it. So this is a, a long presentation. This is Toby Singer's response. It's like 16 minutes long. So yeah, because he, he can't say anything quickly. He's got a bluster on a go on lots of tangents, give sort of a shotgun approach, a bunch of arguments at once, hope a few of them stick. So I don't know. This is going to be 16 minutes. I'm going to summarize his arguments at the end so you can fast forward if you want to. But if you're going to stick around, um, just sit back, relax, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a coke and some chips while we listen to him, so uh, don't mind the munching. But yeah, here we go. See, see, meaning you're gonna have children, and the word zera doesn't just mean children as a metaphorical children. Zera means seed. It means physical offspring. It does not mean metaphoric children. Now there is another way a person can say metaphoric children if you say the word ben a son sounds a little uh bonim, children, bonim atem Hashem lekechem, Deuteronomy 14 uh, you are children of the lord your god uh, you could say that if someone is a disciple meaning a student you could say they're like children you could use the word children right, they're like children you could use the word children like in the english language you could say these are my children you could say you are like children to me it could be either literally physical or it could be metaphoric children now that's the word children like bonim but not with the word zera the word zera means physical children because it means literally see this word zera is a very well known word. This word is very well known in Semitic languages. In fact, very in well Arabic, known. 
the way you say a seed that a, a farmer plants in the ground is essentially the same exact word. Mm. So zera means physical children. It cannot mean, it never means metaphoric children. As it turns out, Christians believe that Jesus never had physical children. He never got married and never had physical children. I should say this, and I'm not trying to be provocative, but actually there's no place in the Christian Bible where there's any indication that Jesus didn't get married and have children. It's sort of just assumed. But we'll we'll ignore that for a moment. So Christians believe that Jesus never got married. He never, uh, no woman became pregnant from him, let alone had children from him, which means this can't possibly apply to him. And then it says, Yarech Yomim. He'll have long days. Well, no, it means he'll extend his life. Christians believe that Jesus died, what, 33, 30, whatever it is, right? Well, that's not a very long life. Um, it also doesn't make sense when I mean, he has a long life. How am I saying long life? It's God. God is eternal. What do you mean he's going to have long life? I know. Well, and if it means after life, kind of that's life extension. Eternal. That doesn't make sense either. No. Yeah, it wouldn't make sense of that. Remember the, the point I said a moment ago? It says. Yira zera, he will see seed. Zera, I, I told you, means physical seed. Literally, the offspring. It means offspring. So this Christian is arguing that, hold on, Rabbi Singer, not so fast. As it turns out, there is an example in Tanakh where the word zera means metaphor. Metaphorical children, not physical children. And if you, if you open up a Christian Bible, uh, you can see it in a Christian Bible very easily because that, that's how they render it. And I'm interested in Isaiah 57, verse 4. Isaiah 57, verse 4, the text says, Al mi tisanogu, al mi tarchivu pe tar. Tarich Loshan, Halo Atem Yilde Fesha Zera Shaker. I'm very interested in the last two words. Zera Shaker. Now, Shaker means false. Zera Shaker, therefore, should mean, well, the King James renders it something like the seed of falsehood. The seed of falsehood. This is a very, I'll explain Isaiah 57 in a moment. But as you can imagine, Isaiah 57, this section, Isaiah explodes yeah. with criticism so of those who are wicked and calls them the this term Zerah Sheker, which means the seed of falsehood. Now, the Christians argue all the time. Seed of falsehood. Well, seed of if it's if it's a seed of falsehood, that has to be metaphor. Falsehood is a concept. It, falsehood doesn't have babies. So here is an example where the word zera can be used to be a metaphor child. And Rabbi Singer, what you're saying is completely not true. And all of that, this is only four chapters after Isaiah 3. So here, missionaries argue, is an open proof, because it says, uh, seed of falsehood. I can see it openly in my NIV, in my King James, in my whatever it is, the New King James, in my American Standard Version, it doesn't make a difference. In all 175 translations that I have online, it all of them say seed of falsehood. And they have, well, falsehood, if falsehood has a seed, it must mean that the word seed doesn't necessarily mean a physical seed. It can be a metaphoric seed. And if it is, if it can be a metaphoric seed, then it can be a metaphoric seed in Isaiah 53 as well. And therefore, when God promises a servant that you're a zera, that you will see seed, it means that you will see metaphorical descendants, meaning those who are followers of you, those who are your disciples, those are your children, those are the ones who are that is meant there. It doesn't have to mean physical seed, and therefore yeah, mean Congress, this uh, proof Congress. is no proof at all. Okay? The answer of this, this, it's a very serious charge, 
I've heard it. Serious It's charge. a well-worn argument that I've heard for a very long time. It's a good argument. And it is utterly uh, void of merit. Wow. The reason for That's that is claim. that Zera Sheker in Isaiah 54 does not mean seed of falsehood. Now, I want to do this really slow with you. Zera Sheker. Let's translate each of those words. Zera means seed, seed, okay? And Sheker means false, okay? So therefore, it should be Zera Sheker should mean, just translate the two words right on. Zera, seed, Sheker, false. Offspring of falsehood. It sounds like the King James is correct. But actually, this is complete nonsense because in English, this would work. If you tried doing this, with a person who's an Arabic speaker, a Hebrew speaker, they would say, you don't know what you're talking about. Because oh, so I guess in Jew Hebrew, wouldn't translate as in way. Semitic languages in general, the adjective goes after the noun, not before the noun. For yeah, example, if I Hebrew. want to say a red ball in English, in English we say red ball. So red is the adjective and ball is the noun. And that's how you say it, red ball. Red ball means, uh, red ball, red is the adjective, and the word red comes first, and then the noun is second, a red ball. But in Hebrew, it's the reverse. The way you say red mm. ball in Hebrew is kadur edom, which means ball red, not red ball. So and therefore, the King James, the King James completely mistranslated. Didn't understand that. Because yeah. they put the, they switch around the adjective. Zera Sheka means false seed, not seed of falsehood. That it means bitch. false seed. Got it? Now you go, seed. what do you mean false seed? So what I would encourage, that's <laughs> really amazing. Do you got what I'm saying? Zera Sheka doesn't mean seed of falsehood. It means false seed. It means lying seed. It means treacherous seed. It means a vanity seed. But is it not still and metaphorical? Using it that no, way would not still be okay. I, no, you'll see you'll okay. see in a moment. Not only isn't it metaphorical, but you will see right now that in fact, if I had to demonstrate from any passage in Tanakh that the word zera means literally the physical seed that creates a human being, this is the best this is the best possible verse to use. Yeah, and sure. it's this verse, as you'll see in a moment, more than any other verse in Tanakh that I can think of, demonstrates without question that the word zera can only mean physical seed because here it's literally talking about the very substance from which human life is created. Now, yeah, hold, hold on, this is sort of Tobias kryptonite, the way he just massively overstates his case all the time. I think it's really why he won't debate Michael Brown, and we're slowly over halfway through. Better get through it. CC, meaning you're going to have children. And the word Zera doesn't just mean children as a metaphorical children. Oh, no. Zera means seed. It means physical offspring. It does not mean metaphoric children. Now, there is another way a person can say metaphoric children. If you say the word Ben, a son, well, Bonim, yeah, nobody children. doubts that Ben is metaphorical, Bonim too. Bonim Atem Deuteronomy 14. Uh, you are children of the Lord your God. Uh, you could say that if someone like is a disciple, meaning a student, you could say they're like children. You could use the word children, like in the English language. You could say, these are my children. You could say, you are like children to me. It could be either literally physical, or it could be metaphoric children. Now, that's the word children, like Bonim. But not with the word zera. The word zera means physical children, because it means literally see. This word zera is a very well known. This word is very well known in Semitic languages. In fact, in Arabic, the way you say a seed that a, a farmer plants in the ground is essentially the same exact word. So yeah, zera same, same means Hebrew. physical children. For, for it cannot seed, mean. Plants. It never means metaphoric children. As it turns out, it Christians children. believe that Jesus never had physical children. He never got married and never had physical children. I should say this, and I'm not trying to be provocative, but actually, there's no place in the Christian Bible. Wait, did you? 
just say that. Where there's any indication that she just didn't get married and have children. Yeah, it's I sort of I just assumed. Saying something about John and we'll, implying it. We'll ignore that for a moment. So yeah, Christian would believe again. that Jesus never got married. He never, uh, no woman no, became no, pregnant. That's right. Because he repeats himself. Oh, this plays in the loop. All right. Anyway, sorry about that. Uh, after 16 whole minutes, you know, he just talks in circles. All right. So, the TLDR version. Here we go. According to Tobia, uh, Isaiah is talking about literal seed. Okay? And in Isaiah 57, for it should be wicked children and false seed. Instead of children of transgression, uh, sin of deceit. Because the whole passage is about sexual sin and other kinds of sins. Ah, the King James Version mistranslates the verse on his thing. It's like, oh, if you actually knew Hebrew, you'd realize that the like the noun comes before the adjective. Yeah, we knew that. The King James Version translators knew that pretty well, too. So, yeah, it's, sort of, it's an example of the rabbi trying to pull a fast one on you. Like, the Christian Hebraists know Hebrew, I'd say in some ways, better than the rabbis do. Because it's not dependent as much on rabbinic tradition as it is on actual, like, mainstream scholarship, which can sometimes tra uh, contradict the r the rabbi's understanding. So here's here, here's here's the word. It's zera. This is the word here. Strong's H two uh, two two three three. If you want to look the thing up, it has a bunch of things. Its primary use is as an agricultural term. This is its most literal use. The seed you use to plant in the ground. That's what it means literally. Um, it can be used, every time it's used in any other way, it's in a sense metaphorical. When it's even the use of human, human seed, human physical offspring, sperm, that's all in some level metaphorical. Because its original meaning in the ancient Semitic languages is that for physical um, plants, like non-animal life or plants that you plant in the ground. As you can see here, it has a lot of different uses. The descendants of Isaiah, a race or family, the royal race, or the race of men. So yeah, or a planting. The question is, can we find clear examples of it being non-literal? And there's actually a, a number of them. Uh, again, thank you again to the owner of Answering Judaism for digging these out for me, because I didn't have to go through it. Isaiah 1.4, A Sinful Nation. People laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that deal corruptly. Again, is every single person's ancestor an evildoer? Like, I, I think it's more like you're insulting their ancestor. You're a product of evildoers. Isaiah 14.20 Shall not be joined with them in burial, because the host destroyed the land. You've slain the people, the seeds of evildoers shall not be named forever. So, okay, the... What physical descendants? If your parents are bad, just your physical seed, your households? It seems like a good metaphor here. Also in Psalm 22, there's two separate passages. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you seed of Jacob, glorify him. And stand in awe of him, all of you seed of Israel. Are they excluding converts? Are they excluding the children of converts? I, I don't think so. This is the same thing as B'nai Yisrael. Right, which is used metaphorically. And so here, they, they just substituted Zerah. Because I, I don't think it is excluding converts. It's, 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 it's not just physical offspring. It's physical and sort of spiritual offspring as well. And also in verse 30, um, it's about God. Seed shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. Okay, this is a parallelism. So posterity, again, seed shall serve him. Whose seed? God's own physical seed? Is God corporeal now? Uh, I doubt it. Like, this is the same sense that it means in, in Isaiah. Posterity. Zera. Not Zera. O. Oh, his seed. Just Zera. Posterity. So, he'll see posterity. God will see posterity. Yeah, it's the same meaning. And so now when we get to the grammar, there's two things we need to understand. First is parallelism. And so in Hebrew poetry, it's not meter and rhyme that give uh, a passage its flavor. It is parallelism. And these are seven different types to so go to school or get some schooling online for biblical Hebrew. And you'll get to go through different passages and understand the difference of like a, well, like chiastic passages or uh, different theories on parallelism. This is a diagram of different types of parallelism. Psalm 24, the top one, is what we're really looking at because it's the one closest to the passage that we are um, in Isaiah that we're looking at. 
The earth is the Lord's, and all that is in it, the world, and all who dwell therein. There is a synonymous parallelism right there. For it's he who founded it upon the sea, and planted it uh, firm upon the waters beneath. Again, the two lines, uh, they don't rhyme, but they both express the same idea using different words. You're sort of saying the same thing twice, and you find this all over Hebrew poetry. Isaiah 57, 3 and 4. What goes on here? The righteous man perishes, and no one lays it to his heart. Devout men are taken away, while no one understands. For the righteous man is taken away from calamity. He enters into peace, they rest in their beds, who walk upon their uprightness. But you draw near, sons of the sorceress, offspring of the adulterer and the loose woman, or harlot. Whom are you mocking against? Whom do you open your mouth wide and stick out your tongue? Are you not children of transgression, the offspring of deceit? You who turn with lust among the oaks, among every green tree, who slaughter your children in the valleys under the cleft of the rocks. So yeah, the term seed is used, um, it's used with lust here. But notice this, you have a parallelism in three and the same thing in four. Now nobody disputes that three is son of a sorceress, offspring of the adulterer and loose woman. Now there are some translations that son of sorcery rather than of the sorceress. I mean, these are Jewish translations, but still, there is, but still, the, you are the offspring of the adulterer and the loose woman. Um, and so you go further down, and you have the same parallelism. Are you not children of transgression, offspring of deceit? So you have two synonymous parallelisms. Take them together, you get an eclectic parallelism, and you find this in Hebrew poetry. The second thing is called the construct chain in Hebrew. Instead of using the word of, the way we use in English, or in modern Hebrew, shell. You take two nouns, smash them together, um, like kol ish is a, um, a voice of a man. You add ha in front of the second word, it becomes definite. The voice of the man. Melech Eretz, uh, Erev HaMelech, or Evet HaMelech. All right. Take the two nouns, smash them together, you get a construct chain. And you can have construct, very long construct chains. Like you can have, you know, all of the family of the house of the father of his mother. You know, you, you can make the ancient Hebrew have songs like, you know, there's a hole in the middle of the sea. You could probably translate that in ancient Hebrew with very long construct chains. It would be an interesting exercise, too, to do something like that. And so, if we have Isaiah 57, 50, uh, 3 and 4, you can see... The two construct chains together. The first one is definitely a construct chain. Nobody disputes that. The second one, um, this is where Tovia pulls one over on you. It's not that the the, the adjective is after the noun. Um, uh, Yilte uh, Pesha are both nouns. Zera Sheker are both nouns. It's not a noun and an adjective. It's nouns. Just as it is in the previous verse. You have two construct chains. Uh, four nouns right in a row. And further down, again, four construct chains. And what, what do you get? You get the same parallelism in construct chains. Just as we had a parallelism before, we have, enough, we have the construct chains also giving us, you know, building on top of the parallelism. And next, I wonder about Jewish translations, right? Like, again, as Tobia it was very explicit, You've got, you know, your hundred or whatever Christian translations, right? Yeah, they must be right. But if you know Hebrew, you know, if you're Jewish and you know Hebrew, then certainly you're not going to make the same mistake. Like, let's check out Zafaria.org, which is an open source um, treasure trove of Jewish literature. It's run by volunteers like Wikipedia, but, you know, the people know their stuff. They know their rabbinic literature. So what does that say? Oh, wait, it says you're the offspring of an adulterer and a harlot, and you are children of inequity, offspring of treachery. Wait a minute, what's this thing about false seed? This is a Jewish site. Like, why does it say false seed? I don't know. Let's check another translation. Because this is by volunteers. Let's see if we do one by professional Jewish authors. Ah, the Machin Mamre, which is a good translation site. All right, so, uh, against whom do you make a wide mouth? Uh, and drop the tongue. Are you not children of a transgression? A seed of falsehood. Wait a minute. Isn't it false seed? Wicked children? Why does it say a children of transgression? And a seed of falsehood. I don't know. Uh, maybe, I don't know, Judaica Press? What do they have to say? That, oh, the Jewish Publication Society. 
That, that's a pretty reliable one, and it pretty much goes the same way. You're the offspring of an adulterer and a harlot, right? Sons of a sorceress. What are you, children of iniquity, offspring of treachery? This is a JPS translation. Do they, you know, they're Jews. They, do they not know that this is the, the adjective comes after the noun? The professional translation society? Well, how about this? Art scroll. Look at the art scroll this time. Art scroll. Here we go, art scroll. Oh, the Torah anthology. I forgot about that. Look at the Torah anthology. Uh, Mamlo 8. You'll find it in all the Jewish bookstores. And look here. It says, against whom do you indulge, right? You're the children of adulterers and harlots. Are you not children of sin, offspring of treachery? Again, the May Amlo 8. This is a rabbinic thing. You find it in the Orthodox Jewish bookstores. False seed. Uh, it's, it's not there. I, I can't seem to find it. How about Art Scroll, right? It's in every Orthodox Jewish bookstore, every Orthodox Jewish synagogue. This is like the big thing. All right? I think there was one modern Orthodox synagogue that, that took Art Scroll as like the really fundamentalist publication. Like you think it's all literal and it's all true. Sort of like the mirror image of Mordecai Kaplan. It, again, it's super popular, super well respected among Orthodox rabbis. And what does it say? Seed of the adulterer and the adulteress, children of sin, seed of falsehood. Art, come on, this is art scroll here. Surely they know that the adjective comes after the noun, right? I mean, they, they, they can't be that ignorant. So, can we fi even find Jewish publications that say it's false seed? Well, how about this, how about this? This is from uh, Tobia's own book, Let's Get Biblical. This is from Volume 2. So he advises... Um, someone who writes to him, what is the best Jewish translation of the Hebrew Scriptures? What's the best Jewish translation? He said there's a 30-volume series from Judaica Press. So, from Rabbi Rosenberg. Uh, so, for him, it's like, you know, it's a few hundred shekelim, right? But, you know, as long as you're not going to go, oi, my shekels, uh, yeah, you're happy to get it. So, sure, let's invest in it. So, those of you who are still listening, um, if this was a class, I would definitely ask you this. I'd say, okay, if you think that the Judaic Press, the, you know, Tobias Singer's own hand-picked translation, is going to say, wicked children false seed, raise your hand. All right, hopefully your, you know, your hand isn't up. And you say, okay, how many of you think that it's going to say, children of deceit, which he, of course, said is a terrible translation out of ignorance, right? How, how many think that, right? You know, raise your hand. Well, get ready. Three, two, one, reveal! And you draw hither, children of sorcery, children who commit adultery and played the whore, on whom you rely to enjoy yourselves. Against whom do you open your mouth wide? Against whom do you stick out your tongue? Are you not children of transgression, seed of falsehood? Wait, it, it, you know, if, if these Christian translations are so wrong for, for translating it seed of falsehood or seed of deceit, what's Judaica Press? Well, why, why do they screw up the translation, Tovia? I, I don't get how every single Jewish translation seems to reinforce the same point of the King James Bible. Why, why don't you mention this on your radio show? Do you not know this? Are you ignorant? Are you just pulling a fast one on your viewers? I, I don't know. So, in conclusion, um, yeah, we got lots of bluster, a good 16 minutes of just solid talking without much of a response. Uh, I can tell you this is a bonus. The source Tobia probably got for saying, false seed is the Targums. The Targums are an Aramaic translation of the Hebrew Scriptures, and they are a non-literal translation. They're sort of meant as homiletical, kind of metaphorical. It's used for teaching and edification, but not as like a literal translation. That's the only Jewish source I could find that even gave such a translation. Um, but every Jewish commentator I've looked at, every Jewish sword, every... You know, Jewish, you know, Jewish translation, they all agree with the objection. You're, like, your children of transgression, seed of deceit. Does transgression produce literal, physical children? Does deceit produce literal, physical children? 
because otherwise your whole objection is just a bunch of shmegege. Shalom. Aleichem.